All right, let me, let me address an issue that's coming up in the chat that needs to be addressed. Wokeism is not Marxism. I've said this a thousand times. The modern left is not Marxist. Marxism is too nice of a term to use for them. They're far worse than Marxists. Marxism is an entire system of ideas. It's a false, evil system of ideas. But it is an entire system of ideas that categorizes people based on certain views. It has a certain view of history and the deterministic view of history. It has a certain view of capitalism. It has a certain view of how history unfolds into the future and what comes next. These woke characters, the modern left, the far left, are not Marxists. The nihilists, they don't have a vision. They don't have a theory. Critical race theory is not Marxism just applied to race. It's much worse than Marxism. Yes, I know you can call it neo-Marxism, but it's not neo-Marxism. It's postmodernism. It's postmodernism which goes beyond, it, it dumps Marx because Marx is too rigid, Marx is too, quote, scientific. And they dump, there's no science, there's no truth, there's no reality. While Marx implies that, that's not Marxism. They're nihilists. They're complete, utter subjectivists. They're emotionalists. I've been talking about this for years. So those of you, those of you who argue that I'm coming late to the party is absurd. Um, they're absolutely obsessed with equity, which means, that's right, which means equality to them, which means the destruction of all that is good, the, all that is better, all that is superior. It's not the superiority of the proletarian. It's not the achievement of some uh, uh, um, a proletarian utopia. They have no conception of that. It's hatred of the good for being the good, chopping them down, destroying them, putting them down. Hatred of life, hatred of values, hatred of success. And it's motivated by emotion and feeling. And mostly by fear and, and alienation. So it's giving them way too much credibility to call them neo-Marxists. They don't know Marx. They have no clue what Marx is. They have no clue about class struggle. They have no, they have no clue about anything that Marx was involved in. Neo-Marxists give them, gives them a a semblance of credibility. They don't deserve it. They're much worse. They're much lower in the rungs of hell. And by the way, I've been talking about the nihilist left for years and years and years. And suddenly, talking about this round of nihilist left since you know, obviously with, with Black Lives Matter last year, nonstop. So give me a break. Now, it's true. It's not the only topic I talk about. <laughs> I also talk about the nihilist right. But because I don't believe there's only one enemy. I don't believe there's only one thing. There is such a thing as a neo-Marxist. These people are not neo-Marxists. You want a neo-Marxist? It's... Um, Oh God, what's what's the, the professor at Harvard, uh, the, the black professor at Harvard? Um, Cornell West is a neo-Marxist. These people are not neo-Marxists. And Cornell West is not CRT. Cornell West is not a nihilist. I mean, he's, he's, he's a form of nihilist. Richard Wolff is a neo-Marxist. So it doesn't help 
When you use categories you don't understand, you apply them to the bad guys, and you are discredited because you, you immediately, people can see you don't know what you're talking about. So get your categories right. All right, um, what did I want to, so the success of these uh, woke creatures, and, and woke is just shortcut for the, 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 the emotionalist, demanding, whiny, complaining, um, uh, 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 you know, attitude that these people have. They can't be offended, the anti-free speech, that's the big issue. And by the way, I've been talking about free speech since, uh, since I started this podcast, because I started this podcast, I started this whole show on, uh, on the day that Charlie Hebdo was attacked, and free speech has been a constant theme. And what these people are against more than anything else is free speech, because they can't take it that speech is offensive. Yeah, I've, I've, I, keep, I keep having to repeat myself. Um, you're wrong, you're wrong, wrong, a bony nihilist, Kendi and D'Angelo, religionist. Woke racism is a religion like Marxism. It's M2 Allah Dim. As I've explained a thousand times, you can't make intersectionality into an M2. It just cannot work because it's too fragmented. The whole point of critical race theory, the whole point of their religion, the whole point of, uh, 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 of intersectionality is disintegration. The whole point is everybody's against everybody. You cannot unify anybody around uh, uh, white, uh, what do you call it, uh, white, uh, not guilt, um, whatever the D'Angelo stupid thing is, which I did a whole video on last year, right? You can't integrate that. You can't unify people around it. It's a disunifier. It's a disintegrator. It's a cloud. It's a D2 disguised as an M2, but it's a D2. It's completely broken up. And indeed, anything that comes out of postmodernism, even if they couch it as, yeah, follow me, we'll all do whatever. White fragility, thank you. Anything that comes out of postmodernism is inherently D2. Because postmodernism is inherently denying the existence of reality, denies the existence of truth, any truth, and therefore completely disintegrated. So going to Leonard Peikoff's dim, I think, I, I, I'm not, certainly not speaking for Leonard, but I think that all of these, and by the way, uh, Leonard talks about egalitarians as being D2s, the worst kind of D2s possible. And that's exactly what these people are. God. All right. So um, it's... Ay. All right, I'm going to ignore the, the chat because it's, uh, it's just frustrating and, and just not true. So no, uh, uh, Juan and Boney are, are power-lusting uh, politicians who, yes, they're, they're basically nihilists, they're driven by hate. Certainly, uh, both of those are. Kendi and D'Angelo are, are, are much more sophisticated, but much more dangerous, much more impactful, but they are... Uh, they are nihilists, they are egalitarians, they are uh, a complete, complete. The, the whole ideology, their whole ideology is built on disintegration. M needs to integrate and needs to appeal to a broad number of people to gain influence. It has to, this is why Christianity is so powerful, right? More powerful than Judaism. Because Christianity is universal. It's a universal religion. You can all join. But if you think that an ideology that says all white people should feel guilty and are nothing and should be 
nobodies and is that is not an M, particularly in a society where you know there are more white people than anybody else. That's not unifying. That's not integrating. That's setting everybody against everybody else, which is exactly their goal. Their goal is not to create a society. Their goal is not a utopia. Their goal is not some beautiful society in the future. Their goal is destruction. Their goal is pain. Their goal is to make you feel guilty. Their goal is to make you suffer. It has nothing to do with creating something. There's nothing for them to create. Every single company is not unified on the topic of white fragility. Nobody takes white fragility seriously. Yes, the company does the virtue signaling it needs to do to show that it's okay. But it's not unified. 90% of the employees are making fun of CRT in the background. Nobody believes it. Nobody believes in it. It's a complete facade. It's a, it's a way to score points. I mean, even in Silicon Valley, I will give you examples. People are rejecting this nonsense, left and right. And a majority of Apple uh, employees don't participate in these woke groups that send out their demands to the CEO. It's a tiny fraction of the employees. You cannot unify people, truly unify people, and drive them towards a goal of disintegration. It has to be around some ideal. What's the ideal of white fragility? There is no ideal. There is no vision. There's no thing that we're fighting for. Other than you're rotten. And the world's rotten. And there's nothing really to do because you're determined to be rotten. It's just a bunch of social signaling. Virtue signaling, trying to appear cool. Of course, you don't have to be a majority to take things over, but you have to have an ideology that unifies. <laughs> God, you, got, you, you guys take things out of context. Of course, you don't have to be a majority. The, the communists weren't a majority. Uh, the Christians weren't a majority. Uh, you know, the, the Nazis weren't a majority. The Nazis won. Uh, 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 they didn't win a majority in the elections of 1932. 32, was it? I think it was 32. But you have to have an ideology that rallies the majority around you ultimately. Otherwise, otherwise, you can't establish control. Now, for the long run, look, in the short run, yes, there's no question. The Pol Pot was a nihilist and egalitarian, and he wasn't, he wasn't an M2, he was a D2. And for a while, he controlled Cambodia and utterly devastated it and slaughtered millions of people. But it wasn't a sustainable ideology. It wasn't something that would, could survive. Every company is the, that's, first of all, that's just not true. And I, I, I talked about HR departments and, and, uh, and what they do, but that's not unification. You don't understand what unification means if you think in those terms. Sorry, I, and, and, and. Uh, again, you cannot have an ideology that breaks all people into little groups and has them all fighting against each other and all in conflict with one another. Not a big group and a minority group and we, we oppress the minority. That's easy. But having all these little groups all over the place um, and, and all at each other's throats, that is not a ruling ideology. Uh, you know, we will see. But I, I, I don't think you understand what Leonard's talking about. And I don't think you understand what unification means. What we need today, 
what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>